Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name. This morning, I want to do a brief teaching. And um, after 30 to 40 minutes, we will jump. Is that okay? We are considering the subject of dominion. I pray you listen and apply the things I want to share. Sometimes when I come for a meeting like this, I try to find out if the people are ready to receive the subject or the theme of their meeting. Not in any way to undermine them. But the reason is because our generation like big things. But we are not willing to pay the price to work in it. So some of the things that even the fathers dread, they are the things we play with. Because to us, it's just about oratory, it's just about excitement. So when we consider the subject of dominion, I know we are migrating from the realm of men to participate in the league of spirits. Because there is no way you can discuss dominion without understanding the stake that spirits hold over the visible realm. There is no way you can consider the subject of dominion without considering the rigid requirements of alignment. Because you can't walk with the spirit except you understand the protocols of alignment. And most times, the subject of alignment has to do with covenants. It has to do with altars. It has to do with sacrifices. And when young people who are very distracted, who are not even focused on any issue, begin to consider subjects that have their roots and foundation in covenants, on altars, and in sacrifices, you begin to wonder where you start talking from. But we love oratory and we love eloquence. So this morning, my first prayer is for us to understand the gravity of the subject and also to receive grace to keep the rigid requirements of this subject. And the truth is, without dominion, we will not be relevant in this generation. No matter how loud we talk, no matter the number that gathers, or no matter the activities, a generation that understands dominion and has stature is more relevant to the Spirit of God than a numerical generation that does not have understanding of the requirements of dominion. God preferred to have one man of stature in the territory than a million babes in that territory as touching matters of kingdom, government, and dominion. So this morning, my prayer is not for you to be excited. It's for you to understand the requirements of the subject that we want to consider and to apply your life to it rigidly. Most of you will come into the reality of what we'll share in this meeting five years from now. I'm telling you, five years from now, because until you begin to pay heed to the things you must do, you will never walk in dominion. You will only hear about it. You will never walk in it. Because dominion is government. Dominion is rulership. It's not for babes. It said the heir, so long as he's a child, is not different from a servant. Even though he's the Lord of all. And if you don't have dominion, your business will suffer. Your family will suffer. Your ministry will suffer. The only thing that makes what you do work is the authority that you wield and it's in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? So you reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Don't worry, don't worry. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Kadosh. 
you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O fountains of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Ali ae, ea, Ali ae, ea, Ali ae, ea, Ali ae. Manda fraha la kizo salamande le kiza Vera la londre farina satakave Salina mantra kido sazak Manda rada koreana taliga fande sezezali Shibarago Satakira Radiana Talega Bondre Tiga Sadak Manteke Zozo Fradadina Mantaliga Patekizo Salamande Erianda Savra Kade Lamandre Kido Barakada Gazida Bonda La Gavana Rakata Patida Sanzaliata Alila Bande Kezo Zombere de Gila Manteke Zodo Paragadi Mantezizi Salandre Paradoja Rakiba Takaba Rakaena Tole Vandele Gizo Mantekida Safaranira Tavale Alia Just keep playing. Brothers and sisters, please pardon me. It's not pride, it's not arrogance. If I don't ascend, I can't preach. I'm not a teacher. What I came to tell you is in my spirit, it's not in my head. I, I need to go beyond the notes. So when they dwarf me, it becomes a challenge. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. You can't download wisdom. You can't tap into ancient scrolls unless you are ascended. When you are ascended, even the words you speak, they are given to you. There is a mountain where the testimonies of God are open to mortars. The oracles of God, they are kept. They, he, he, God himself hides them in his bosom. When you follow the protocol, then he opens the oracles to you. That's when you talk like a God. We don't talk because we read. We talk because we tap into frequencies in the spirit. And what God is streaming part time, He discloses this to us. This is why our wars carry power. It's not because we are powerful in ourselves, it's because there is a dimension in the spirit that flows part time. And when a man can align with those frequencies, he can stream into it. I wish we begin to have conferences for keyboardists and singers. They think it's skill, it's not skill. The people in the world are very skillful, they studied it in Juliet. When you come, your goal is, is the movements of the spirit. You are finding out when the waters will be stirred. You are looking for when the movements, the mulberry trees will move. And then you find it. So that your angelic partner will begin to guide your fingers. They come for meetings, they don't fast. They don't pray, they just throw and sit down. They don't even find out who is coming to preach and look for a way to align with the spirit. Because they don't know it's a ministration. It's a difficult thing to represent a spirit. And if we are considering dominion, we must know these things. Else we will start churches, start ministries, and all we will have will be many churches. But there will be no power in the territory. All we will have will be titles, there will be no power. Because nobody can find the spirit, the alignment of the spirit. Before you minister in Calabar, there are territorial spirits here that have bound the souls of men. You must ascend above their influence to be able to bring government to the people in the territory. 
me i'm trying to align with you when we ascend we can do so much in 10 minutes so you just be praying In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. It said, And God blessed them. And he said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish, and have dominion. So dominion was given to man as his token from God. In Genesis 1 26. It said, Let us make man... In our own image, after our likeness, and in the image of God, He made man, male and female, He made them both. So, man is not a male, man is not a female, man is both male and female. You know, when we say man, we assume that is the male gender. The first blueprint of man is called a species that carries the image of God. So any species that carries the image of God that is trapped in a body is a man. And the token that God gave to that species is the power to rule in the visible realm. So two things happen. If you don't carry the image of God in this vessel, then you are not a man. You may be breathing, you may be talking, and you may be shouting. But the proof that you are a man is that when we look upon you, what reflects from your life is the likeness of God and the image of God. And the second proof that you are a man is not that you are tall and fair. The second proof that you are a man is that you have power to create change. So men were not designed to struggle with it. Men were not designed to struggle with creation. This is why hardship reduces the quality of a man. Because the glory of a man is revealed when he sustains capacity to exercise dominion. So a man who is in the altar of God has no business failing exam. The moment he begins to fail exam, it means he is falling from the realm of dominion. A man has no business struggling in, in business. The moment he begins to struggle in business, It means he is no longer consistent with the blueprint of Abba. A man has no reason to struggle in ministry. The moment he begins to struggle, it means something is wrong from the foundations. So he has to come back to the studio of eternity and find out what is wrong with this setting that is making it impossible for me to exercise dominion. We don't struggle to exercise dominion. It's our way of life. The way we breathe that's how we exercise dominion. So if you go to school, passing an exam is not a testimony. That is how, it's just like breathing. If you breathe, you testify. Jesus sent 12, 70 men out. And they went, they said, demons were subject to us. And they said, rejoice not that demons are subject to you. You are a creature of dominion. The reason you should rejoice is that you have a stake in Zion. The testimony is not that you conquered. The testimony is not that you won. The testimony is not that you rule. Ruling and conquering is a byproduct of your existence. But you see, because we are falling from dominion, the things that should be natural to us are the things we glamour about. So if I pray here now, and a deaf ear opens, suddenly I start feeling like an apostle. It's not the opening of the deaf ear that made me a minister. As a believer, I should open deaf ears. If I come here now and the blind eyes open, suddenly I'll start feeling like a champion. It's not the opening of the blind eye. It's natural when the church steps into dominion. 
we can be doing what we are doing and somebody has a challenge the demon is screaming there the pastor doesn't need to start shouting from the altar get out the usher standing by can just throw and say keep quiet you are distracting the service and it's not a testimony this is the subject we want to consider not that demon is screaming and then they bring him out what is your name where are you from and waste the whole service where we should equip men we stop the service and allow demons to do shows on the altar and the demon can take one hour from the service it's a waste of time when we waste time with demons it's because we don't know dominion in fact attention should not be paid to them take them to the back let them not handle that we are talking serious kingdom matters we are opening the secrets and the oracles of god we are empowering men for assignments that are eternal who is this demon to break into our service imagine if you are having a family meeting and then your neighbor comes and say open the door open the door and then you stop the family meeting and then for 30 minutes you are attending to the stranger that came and then when the stranger finished you say let's clap for ourselves this is what we do most times in church service is going on god is talking and the demon truncates the service and then we stop the service for 30 minutes and we are dealing with them it's a waste of time everybody should be able to cast out demons everybody should be able to heal the sick everybody should be able to succeed in whatever they lay their hands to they say whatsoever you do it you shall prosper is the verdict of dominion but most times in 10 aspects of our life it's only one that is working and then we are running around with that one. No. He say whatsoever he do it. It's an error if 50% of your life is working. Every aspect should work. Your family should work. Your business should work. In fact, if it's not working, you should be surprised. But in our own case, because we don't understand dominion, when it starts working, that's when we are shocked. It's to show you the level to which we are falling. When it doesn't work, that's when we should be surprised. But we are in a generation when, when it's working. That's when we are surprised. If one dominion feat is carried out in the service, the whole church goes agog. The whole church. Meanwhile, in the early church, they were so busy with prayer and the ministry of the world that they didn't want to distract themselves with healing the sick. So they arranged them on the streets. When they are coming out of service, anyone that their shadow fall of is healed. It's not part of the miracle service. They went to interact with God. They went for intimacy. They went for intercourse. When they finish what they are doing, then they come and as they are strolling on the sick, the sick are being healed and they go home. These were men that understood dominion. Why is dominion so far from us? Why does it look as if it's alien to us? Why does it look as if only few superstars can carry out certain feats in the body of Christ? Because only few men are paying attention to the requirements of dominion. Every other person comes to receive. They don't come to learn how to rule. So it looks as if it's only the apostle that does certain things. It's only the prophet that does certain things. It's only the pastor, the evangelist and teacher. It has even become so bad that nowadays, even the apostles and prophets and evangelists can't even exercise dominion. So they either fake it or they go to such diabolical powers to do what they should do naturally. Imagine if you are faking breathing. That you want to breathe. Then you have to fake breathing. Breathing that should come natural to you. You are now faking breathing. Or you need to consult a native doctor to empower you to breathe. It either means you are very sick or you are dying. But that's the state of many people. The moment you realize who you are and pay attention to the laws of dominion, it will become natural to you like you, are, like you are breathing. The Bible said many things did Jesus that were not recorded. He said if they were recorded, there is no volume of books in the world that would have contained it. So they decided to just gather a few things to make you believe. If they told you what Jesus did, the miracles themselves, thank you very much, will become a distraction. Because they say all the volumes of the book in the world will not be able to contain it. So Jesus wakes up carrying out miracles.